Now that we've already passed Thanksgiving and Christmas is right around the corner, you're starting to see more and more people maxing out all forms of debt, but particularly the credit card debt. And people know that the amount of credit card debt is at the highest level ever, things like that that we've talked about already. But there are some other underlying trends going on with people and how much debt they're taking out that is actually pretty surprising. And the surprising part of it is the rate at which this is growing right now. Because because the card loans that people are taking out rose about 1.6% in October of 2023, just from September to October, guys. So 1.6%, okay? And the typical average for this time of year is 0.7%. So a whole percentage point higher than normal. And of course, some of this is due to the holiday spending, but I bet you a lot of it is also just due to the fact that people need this money right now to pay their bills. And of course, this is good news for businesses, especially retailers, considering this is like their best time of year in terms of earnings. And even though sales are down, they're still not down as far as it was being projected. But the real problem comes from people paying back this debt, not just from the level that it's being taken out. The average rate of 30 day plus delinquencies across the five big lenders jumped 0.16 percentage points from September to October, which was way above the typical of usually 0.06 points. So we're starting to see not only that the rate that people are taking these loans out and going into debt, but also if how fast people are becoming delinquent on them is also rising, guys. And this is a trend we're likely going to see continue happen throughout next year. Because let's face it, the cost of living is not going down anytime soon. Even with potential deflation on the way, it's still not gonna bring prices back down to where they were pre-pandemic for practically anything. And it's not just delinquencies and the amount of debt going up, it's also the charge-offs. The charge-offs is the debt that they try to collect, but they're unable to because people don't pay the bills and they go to collections, okay? The charge-offs went up 0.77 points, and that is far higher than the average of 0.18 percentage points. So you're talking like seven times more than normal right now. And I know that those figures might not sound like a lot, but it's a, it really is a lot when you add it up to being hundreds of thousands or millions of borrowers. So what does all this mean and what does all this point to? Well, it points to the fact that the way people are spending money right now is completely unsustainable and it's going to slow down at some point because people cannot continuously use and charge up credit for Ever. When we continuously see the amount of debt rise coinciding with the amount of delinquencies and the amount of charge-offs rising, what it means is people are charging more and not paying it off is what it means. And nobody has an unlimited amount of credit to use unless you're extremely wealthy and you have like one of those black cards or whatever it was. I don't even know if those things are real, but I heard rumors about it back in the day where some people, if you're rich enough, you can have an unlimited credit card. Well. Most people don't have that, unfortunately. So really, it's just a matter of time before all of this comes to a crashing end, if you ask me, because at some point, people are gonna hit a wall and they're not gonna be able to continue spending this money. And the thing is, this disproportionately affects lower income households, big surprise, right? Because the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston found out that as of July of this year, Households that have an annual income of $50,000 or less who were delinquent on paying credit card bills, they were utilizing 80 to 90% of their available credit. Think about that for a second. That's almost all of it, guys. So that's it. And that was in July. So imagine where it is now. It could be at the end. It could be as high as it can be. It could be completely maxed out to the point where people have stopped paying, I question, what are they gonna stop paying for next? But if you think it's just low-income households that are defaulting on credit cards and racking up the bills and use, utilizing a high percentage of their credit, think again, because check out this chart here. What we have is the amount of credit card utilization among 30-day delinquent accounts, and this is categorized by annual household income. And all the way at the bottom, you have $100,000 and up, and at the top, you have 25,000 to 50,000 and other income brackets in between. Well, what you quickly notice is even on the very bottom one, people that make over $100,000 a year who are 30 days delinquent on their credit cards right now are utilizing about 68, almost 70% of their available credit. 
So they're not even that far behind people who are basically poor. So what does that tell you guys? It tells you that number one, people are going broke. And number two, that even people that have a decent income are spending far beyond their means and not paying their credit card bills. How does this end well? Tell me a scenario where this ends well, because the only thing I can think of is if the, the Biden administration does a blanket sweep where they wipe out everybody's credit card debt, just like they tried to do with all the student loan debt. <laughs> And you know, the crazy thing about all of this is the amount that, of charge-offs that companies have been collecting recently have actually been below average. In the third quarter of 2023, only about 18% of the charge-offs were collected where the typical 10-year average is about 23%, which suggests that they could be coming after more and more people for this debt. And the other thing that's influencing this is the fact that because delinquencies have been going up so fast recently, the credit card lenders are just starting to catch up. So the charge off collections hasn't caught up to the delinquency numbers yet. So that means more and more people are going to be in collections and have their credit destroyed. And likely what's next after that guys, once they stop paying the credit cards, then they stop paying for the car. And the last thing they stop paying for is the house and or the rent. And that's unfortunately where this ends up. But they're saying that the good news about all of this could be that this might just be a small subset of Americans that have lower incomes and student loans. This isn't everybody because they point to the fact that American Express, which tends to have wealthier clients, has a much lower charge off rate of only 1.3% versus 4% across the bigger lenders. And you know, here's the other thing too. Because a lot of these loans were given out during the pandemic, when people's credit profiles were essentially higher than they are now because people had extra money to pay off extra bills and things like that, people got loans that they probably shouldn't have gotten essentially because their credit scores were artificially inflated because they didn't have to pay mortgages, they didn't have to pay student loans, they didn't have to pay a lot of the stuff that people have to pay for now that actually artificially raised people's credit scores in a way because if they were responsible enough to pay their other bills that they still had to continue paying, then temporarily it puts their credit score higher and gives these people access to higher amounts and higher limits of credit than they otherwise would have gotten. Think about that for a minute. And they also go on to say that credit standards actually were loosened up quite a bit during this time frame, and people who had got credit between 2020 and 2022 were able to get very loosened credit standards to get different types of loans, guys. We're just now starting to see the consequences of that and the funny thing is just the other day when I made a video about real estate they were talking about how oh the housing market can never crash because the lending standards have been so good recently well apparently they haven't been not even just for real estate but also just for regular consumer loans as well and we can start seeing the amount of people that are desperate and need money right now really starting to creep up because the amount of buy now pay later loans has been ramping up guys and i've been covering this every time there's something new to say and lo and behold Here's another one, okay? You have the amount of people using buy now, pay later loans, okay? Is expected to reach record levels right now. During this holiday spending season, it's estimated to produce about $17 billion in holiday online spending, which is an increase of 17% compared to last year. All because of more and more people using buy now, pay later. And apparently this is coming with some pretty serious consequences because about 55% of US consumers face the risk of being unable to cover their basic financial needs and the use of buy now pay later can worsen that reality by adding to mounting debt oh we have all these tight lending standards right but people can get buy now pay later loans people are allowed to max out credit cards and that's okay meanwhile you know we're not checking to see if you're behind on your rent or if you've been making your mortgage or your car payment let's just give people credit no guys this is a terrible idea and unfortunately, I think it's gonna end up where more and more people just become homeless because they can't pay their bills. It's estimated that about two out of five consumers right now face buy now, pay later debt, and a quarter of them missed a payment in the last month. Also, 27% of buy now, pay later users face a decline in their credit score, and 22% have interacted with a debt collector. So clearly people that are taking advantage of these loans are not paying the bill on time. And that's a big problem. 
And basically what this does is it allows people to overspend money that they don't have. Because these programs exist, because they say, okay, don't worry about it, you can buy it today and pay for it over three or four payments, it's not really a concern. People can get three or four, five, ten of these, and then, oh, wake up, oh, sorry, I don't have the money for this anymore. So the real issue is, is when people add up to the having three, four, five of these buy now, pay later loans, it exacerbates their financial troubles. And it's basically designed for people to overspend, okay? That's the reason that they have these because obviously people don't have the money to buy things and if they did they wouldn't need a buy now pay later loan and the big problem that people are not catching on to with this and not understanding is that just because you're able to get a buy now pay later loan doesn't mean you should take one okay you don't have to take every single thing that's offered to you in terms of financial products that are designed to make you go further and further into debt and you know what else is funny is all this spending guys is all pretend right because people are spending all this money on credit cards spending all this money on buy now pay later essentially money that they don't have which has been keeping the economy going artificially strong for far too long and like I said earlier this is eventually going to force people to slow down on their spending because they're gonna be out of credit not even out of cash they're already out of cash and be out of credit too and then when that happens all of the spending goes kaput when the spending goes kaput so does our GDP and that's when they're no longer gonna be able to say we're not in a recession because it will be undeniable at that point. And honestly, a lot of people have to worry about just keeping a roof over their head right now because at the very moment, it takes about 41% of a family's median household income to afford mortgage payments on a median price home. Guys, newsflash, that's far beyond the recommended 28 to 30% of where you're supposed to be. And usually 40 to 42% is the absolute maximum of a debt to income ratio a lender will write a loan on you for and that's if you don't have any further debts and you have good credit okay Literally the last time it cost that much to be able to afford to buy a house was 1984. When they go back and look at historical figures, in 1981, if a home buyer had an 18.45% mortgage rate, that would be 55% of their median income. However, because the home prices were a lot lower, this actually changed the dynamic dramatically. Because during this same time frame, the median cost for a home was about $70,400 in the United States, which was 3.69 times the median income. But fast forward to today, the median price of a home is about $445,000, and that equals about five and a half to six times higher the average home buyer income so this ratio of unaffordability is higher than at any point in history actually including during the last housing crash so how long do you think this can really be sustained for guys just like the spending that's what I keep asking myself and asking you here on the channel to ponder yourself because to me this is all just a ticking time bomb there's no way that things can continue to go on like this indefinitely and that things will just continue to get more expensive forever and people are going to come up with the money to pay for it and just have an endless amount of credit cards and buy now pay later loans to keep paying for all of it it's not going to happen same thing with real estate and if you don't think this debt problem is a huge issue right now check this out balances on non-housing loans throughout the united states so all the other type of loans that people hold besides mortgages has ballooned to 4.8 trillion dollars according to the new york fed and that number has doubled just since 2003 guys so in the last 20 years people have managed to double the amount of household debt that they're carrying tell me how that's sustainable and just 500 billion of it was accumulated in the last two years that just goes to show you how far out of control the spending on everything is right now now they say some of it comes from the car loan debt because cars cost more than ever now but also a lot of it is credit card balances you also have student loan balances so all these things are things people have to pay for but they're saying oh people are making eight thousand dollars more on average per year now from 2020 to 2022 so this should mean that you'll be able to pay for this well clearly not considering delinquencies on all these different types of loans is going up mortgage delinquencies going up credit card delinquencies going up auto loan delinquencies through the roof and just to see how much people aren't paying right now 
During the third quarter of 2023, 5.78% of credit card balances became seriously delinquent, which is 90 days or more behind on payments, guys. Like, how do you even get 90 days or more behind on payments on things? It's from continually spending more than you earn and not paying the bills. That's how. And since the first quarter of 2022, the rate of newly serious delinquent credit card debt has risen by about 90%. And prior to the pandemic, student loan debt also saw the largest rates of new seriously delinquent balances until they paused all student loan payments in March of 2020. So you can almost bet for sure that that's going to happen again within the next year or so. I mean, to me, when you look at all this, it's far worse than you actually think it is because since delinquencies are ticking up across all forms of debt right now and it seems to have no signs of slowing down i just wonder what's going to happen when people stop paying altogether guys some people will be able to file bankruptcy and get out of it but not everybody not everybody's going to be able to get off that easily and guess what if they do there's a good chance they're going to have to sell their house they're going to have to sell all their other assets in order to go through with the bankruptcy and this all comes back to real estate, if you ask me. You know, if people can't pay their rent and they get kicked out, we have the amount of rental inventory going up, as we already have it going up due to the sheer amount of building that's happening with rental units right now. Same thing on the for sale side of the equation with real estate. More people that can't afford to pay their bills, that get forced to sell their house, we have the inventory problem solved that we're being lied to over the past few years saying there's this massive housing inventory shortage. Well, not really. Not if investors start selling, not if people that are in this financial trouble start selling. There's gonna be no inventory shortage at all. In fact, it looks like on this current trajectory that this could lead to a glut of inventory on the market in the next three to four years. But the reality is, all of this takes time for it to play out. It's not like anything's gonna happen overnight where you're just gonna see you know, massive defaults on all different forms of credit and loans and people lose everything tomorrow. It doesn't work that fast. You know, Look, people can be 90 days delinquent on a credit card and still have a place to live and still have a car and still have these things. So it takes time to work its way through the system. All I have to say is if you are somebody who's in this position, you, know, you need to look at how you can turn it around, guys, because because clearly it's come from bad spending habits and that can always be fixed. It's never too late for that. But just like a drug addict, you have to want to fix it. You know, if you have this guilty pleasure of spending money that you don't have and you get some sort of twisted satisfaction out of it and you don't want to fix it, then unfortunately, future's probably not looking too bright for you. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.